Spurge here, and in this video, we're gonna break down the new Fox Racing V1 helmet. So, this is the newest iteration of the V1, and honestly, we've seen Fox update this helmet like three times in the past five years. Uh, they continue to just add a little refinement to what is their entry-level dirt bike helmet. This is a really popular model for them. Now, the price did jump up to $210. That's about a $30 increase over the previous V1, but you're still getting things like MIPS into this. The big story here, the too long didn't read, is they were able to shave like 11 ounces off of this helmet. So now in a medium, this is coming in at two pounds, 13 ounces. It's notably lighter than its predecessor. And I have the predecessor here, we'll pull it up on the table in a second. So when we're looking at the construction for this, still gonna be a polycarb ABS shell. They were just able to add a little bit of refinement to the design itself. Four shell sizes, extra small gets its own shell size, small, medium, share a shell. And then you have a large, which gets its own shell size, and then extra large 2XL gets the fourth shell. DOT ECE rated, seven intake vents. And if you're familiar with the previous version, you notice that the vents have changed a little bit. You no longer have those massive vents down the side of the chin bar. That's where they're able to shave some weight. The other thing is you'll have four exhaust vents out back to let that air escape out the rear. And like I said, two pounds, 13 ounces in a medium. Um, it's notably like, do you, you hold them both in your hand and you can just really feel how much weight has been reduced off of these helmets. So that's probably the most impressive part of this story. From a fitment standpoint, we are gonna say that this is an intermediate oval crown. However, as you get into the cheek pads, the cheek pads are pretty snug on this to the point where it almost feels like a long oval style helmet because of how much pressure is being put on the jaw from the cheek pads. So what we would say is if you find yourself in between sizes, it might make sense to size up a size and then just get a different set of cheek pads to fit in there or to just get a different set of cheek pads and fine tune the fit through the cheek pads themselves. So from a change standpoint, I wanna bring up the predecessor. And again, it's <laughs> I, if you get a chance to hold these side by side, it's extremely impressive, but you can see They've just redesigned the actual aesthetic of the shell. They've gotten some of the erroneous lines and materials just kind of taken away, and they've really slimmed down the overall look. The chin bar on this, where it used to have this vent, that vent looked really cool, flowed some air into there, but you had to really add a bunch of extra reinforcement to be able to get it to give you the support of a full cheek pad. So they were able to actually save some weight by redesigning the chin bar on this, not cheek pad, sorry, misspoke there, but redesigning the chin bar and then the other piece of this too is that the peak is completely redesigned. So one of the biggest complaints on the old version was it was a magnetic peak and at times you could just pop it right off and people would see this flapping around because it was just magnets holding that top part on. So a lot of times they'd lose the peak and that was a big complaint. There was also no adjustability to that older version. So what they did was they created just an adjustable peak, much lighter weight in its design, and a bit more aerodynamic as far as airflow goes over the previous version. So that is really addressing one of the main complaints with the previous version is you now just have a replaceable peak that has two screws on each side and you can adjust that. So again, just kind of moving on from the, uh, the old version, I did want to bring that up and show it to you. And then, as we're looking through this, you know, you do have a different logo on the top. You have the V1 logo where the Fox logo was on top of the previous version. And then you've got the Fox logos down on the side. You can see larger channel cutout around the back, which is again, a little bit different, a little bit sleeker than the previous version. And the overall shell has been completely redesigned over the previous version. Now, if you wanted to bump up to something in Fox's line, you'd be looking at the V3 but that's a considerable jump. You're getting up north of $500 at that point, and that's one of their flagship Supercross helmets. So there's really nothing, excuse me, in between the V1 and the V3 at this point in time, but this really is gonna incorporate a lot of technology that's gonna work beyond just the beginner rider, especially considering how lightweight this is. So let's take a look at the inside, because this is where we're getting a big chunk of the rotational protection with the incorporation of MIPS into this. So just three snap design, very simple cheek pads, nothing too advanced with this. You know, kind of exactly what you'd expect from a helmet around this $200 price point. And you will notice that the uh, there is just kind of small little cutouts. Actually, let me remove the inside liner first and you can see it a little bit better. 
four snaps, we'll get the, uh, the inside liner out and really nothing too complicated there. I will say that, you know, normally when you see these snaps up at the top, you can sometimes feel a little bit of pressure there. I didn't notice any pressure with this particular helmet, but I could see, you know, depending on how you're wearing it, there might be a little bit of fatigue that comes from where those front snaps especially are located on this. Taking a look at the inside, the biggest note here is that the MIPS liner, and if you're familiar with MIPS, you, you'll notice this right away. If you're not familiar with MIPS, it might not be as obvious. You know, it, historically speaking, the MIPS liners in this were all that bright yellow, so you could tell right away. They're going with more of a muted design, so you now have this black internal slip liner. If you're not familiar, MIPS stands for Multi-Directional Impact Protection System. And a lot of manufacturers buy the MIPS system and install it into their helmets. This helps with the rotational impact protection. So if you go down and, and there's you know, a, a twist in the, in the way you're crashing, it helps to reduce brain shear inside your noodle. And this is something that really you know, is important in the dirt world in the way that we crash when we're on dirt bikes or adventure bikes riding off road. It's typically lower speed impacts but with a bit of a twist if we're bouncing our head off a, a rock or a tree or, or something along those lines. So really solid addition at this price point and really what you're looking for in the dirt world is something that input or that uh, directional impact protection worked in. The other thing you'll notice too, a little bit of a channel cutout for the, for the speaker pockets if you're someone that wants to use a comm system. I know that there's been some debates on this over the past year or so around using comm systems whilst on the motocross track. It's also a question we get a lot about whether or not we're using a comm system you know, on dual sport rides or adventure rides. And because this is a DOT ECE rated helmet, it is something that you could use as a dual sport helmet both on and off road um, if you're you know, looking to use a dirt bike helmet for your types of adventure. So a little bit of a channel cutout still might not be enough uh, of a cutout to comfortably wear comm systems with this particular helmet because some of the new comm systems have those thicker you know, uh, higher fidelity speakers like what we're seeing with Cardo and Cena. You know, Cardo's using the uh, the JBLs, and then you got Cena with the Harman Kardons, and they're a thicker speaker now. So, just note that that channel might not be cut out enough, especially with how we're feeling that the cheek pads kind of sit nice and narrow on this. Uh, it might not be the most comfortable helmet if you're looking to install a comm system right out of the box. So, just a bit of a note on that. But I don't think the majority of people at this point in time are looking at a comm system for a dirt bike helmet. But I just wanted to throw it out there if it is a consideration that you are thinking about. Overall, the Too Long didn't read on this from a redesign standpoint. Shaved 11 ounces off the helmet. I mean, big thumbs up to Fox with how light this helmet is now. I think it's really gonna cut down on rider fatigue. And then the other piece is they address the issue that riders were having with the peak. It's now a redesigned peak. You've got two different positions and it works a lot simpler than the old version. So I think all in all, when you're looking at what Fox did to the V1 as their entry level helmet, I would say all thumbs up across the board as far as the iteration that we're seeing with this new version. So if you are interested in the V1 and you wanna hear more about what other riders have to say, you can click the info button on your desktop or mobile device. You can read other rider reviews from folks that are putting the V1 helmet through its paces. And if you have any additional questions as to which helmet is right for you and your riding style, you can always reach out to one of our customer service representatives and they can walk you through the different helmets available to match your riding style as well as your budget. I wanna thank you for joining us for this first look at the Fox Racing V1 helmet. I'm Spurge. Enjoy the ride.